big changes are coming to the weather forecast, and if you're looking for a break from the big heat, my friends, well, stick around because relief may be on the way for some of us. I'll tell you when that relief is coming. And yes, yeah, severe weather is in the picture for the next few days as well. Some of us are going to see tornadoes, very large hail, and destructive winds. I'll break down who's going to see what, and we'll look at all of those threats. Plus, if you've got big outdoor weekend plans, Will the weather cooperate? We're gonna take a look at that, and if you're planning to get away from it all by heading down to the beach, I've got your beach forecast too. We're gonna to take a look at the space and geological weather segment because, hey, this is Cold Rain's weather world, and we've got all the weather. So welcome in, folks. We're gonna kick things off with the severe weather outlook but first we're going to test your weather IQ and see just how much you know about your oceans and continue our oceanic theme. If you did not know that there is a big mountain range running up and down the Atlantic, then now you know something new. And the question today is, what is the name of that mountain range? Is it the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, the Great Ocean Divide, the Atlantic Fault Line, or the Abyssal Spine? And the answer is, going to be revealed at the end of the show, but if you know it, go ahead and type it in the comments section. If not, hang out and we'll get right to it. But first, we're going to take a look and see what kind of severe weather threat we have in store. The sun is sunning up the country, temperatures are rising and instability is increasing and clouds are increasing as well. We see a plume of moisture that we've been watching for days coming up out of the Pacific through New Mexico, West Texas, up here into the northern tier, around in the Midwest, through the Great Lakes into the Northeast, providing plenty of cloud cover. Systems have been moving along the top of that ridge, providing a battleground up here along a stationary boundary. And we've seen thunderstorms break out, even some bouts of severe weather occasionally. Another systems working into the Pacific Northwest, bringing a few clouds, rain showers out there, and leftover boundaries and clouds and even some rain and thunderstorms working through the southeast this morning. Some of those were left over from clusters that formed yesterday. As I said, they would propagate through the night. Probably they did, and some of you have seen thunderstorms over the night into the morning hours as well. Yesterday was a very, very active day. Look here, all of these severe weather reports. We had over 400 of them. A couple of tornadoes down here in southeast Missouri did a little bit of damage, a few hell reports through the Ohio Valley and mid-Atlantic. We even saw some wind reports there, but the bulk of the reports uh, occurred down here in the southeast. Looks like South Carolina, the Panhandle of Florida, where it was really concentrated uh, southwest North Carolina. We saw a lot of wind reports down here. Today is going to be far less active in terms of the number of reports, but where we do get reports, we could see some significant reports up here in around in and around Mason City, Iowa, uh, Rochester, Minnesota, over in Madison, Wisconsin. We could really start to see that activity crank up in the early afternoon hours as a system works in from Nebraska. We saw that on the satellite image kicking off showers up here right now. That's going to work in during peak heating and create a tornado threat along a boundary that's been, we've been watching that boundary for days just kind of set up here. And as the system tracks along that boundary, a little extra spin in the atmosphere, 5% chance of tornadoes. Uh, wind is uh, going to be a threat as well. Hell, not so much, but certainly wind for a large portion of the we've got a marginal risk set up for isolated to widely scattered reports. Predominantly, it's going to be wind up here in Montana as well. That's today. Tomorrow, still got a marginal risk, so isolated to widely scattered severe wind reports, not out of the question in the southeast, maybe a little bit of hail down there too, but uh, certainly up here in North and South Dakota predominantly tomorrow, we're looking at mainly a hail threat. We've got wind, tornadoes possible. Hail for sure is going to be the bigger threat with hailstones maybe getting up to baseball size. Supercells are gonna develop, merge into a cluster and then move on through folks. Looking at the temperatures this afternoon, not as bad as yesterday where we saw lots of 100s and heat index values up into the 1T in places cooler in the northeast cool along the north of the boundary up here in the Great Lakes in the Midwest as well a little pocket of warmth in western Montana fueling some instability there for thunderstorms this afternoon cool in the Pacific Northwest look at Seattle 66 down here in the desert southwest 105 or so in Phoenix and uh, really hot down here mid 90s upper 90s in parts of the southeast today tomorrow the heat backs off a little bit down here we're still seeing plenty of 90s but maybe low lower 90s as opposed to upper 90s now. 
cool in the northeast with showers around tomorrow and cloud cover up through the Great Lakes. Going to be cool there north of the boundary. Warmth making it back up into the plains near the Canadian border. Highs in the upper 80s and chillier out in the Pacific Northwest as that trough works in. But that's going to change as we get on later into the weekend, folks. Now, let's take a look at the dew points this afternoon. There's a dew point boundary up here and a stationary frontal boundary to run somewhere along kind of like that. And uh, as that little system tracks along this afternoon into peak heating, we're going to see that really ramp up the severe weather threat out here. And so watch the dew points as we go on through the day. They just continue to build as we get into the evening uh, and the mixing that happens during the day kind of abates a bit. We see the dew points collect again and, and go up uh, through the nighttime hours. And then tomorrow, plenty of muggy air around and uh, you get a little bit of mixing in the southeast and certain spots around the country, but still we're going to see lots of warm and humid air, going to see instability because of that. And if we go through the afternoon today, look at the instability just sort of build through Iowa here. That's where our uh, thunderstorm access is, a severe weather threat in, in any, any event. Along the Mississippi Valley in the southeast, everybody kind of unstable today. And you start to see these little circles, these little holes in the instability. That's where the model showing thunderstorms kind of eating that up. So we go on through to tonight of course it'll wane as the we lose the heating of the day and then tomorrow look here what happens look up in north and south dakota here in nebraska we get big instability back in the southeast unstable we're going to see pop-up showers and thunderstorms and so tomorrow could be a, a pretty active day up here in north and south dakota everywhere else just scattered showers and thunderstorms looking at how things unfold through the course of the day this is around lunchtime. We start to see showers and thunderstorms break out here in western Iowa and southern Minnesota. And look at that little individual cells. These are super cells. Could see a few tornadoes out of this. And then eventually, as we go toward evening, six, seven, eight, and nine o'clock, we're going to start to see everything converge into line segments and a big line eventually. And that'll push on through and weaken as we lose the heating of the day. And check this out. So I'll roll this back. Afternoon pop-up showers and thunderstorms just randomly across the southeast coming off the higher terrain. And so we're going to see that take place this afternoon in the southeast, but nothing organized there. We go through the day tomorrow. Overnight hours, things kind of die down. We may have a few clusters linger through the overnight. And then as we get on into tomorrow afternoon around lunchtime, here's 1, 2 o'clock. Look at this. Big supercell starting to develop up here in North and South Dakota. Pop-up showers and thunderstorms. Little clusters will form. Outflows will come out. More storms will come up. And you'll see that over the course of the next uh, a couple of days as well. There's that cluster of storms moves through, providing a severe weather threat, tornadoes, potentially very large hail and damaging winds as well, and isolated wind reports around the rest of the country. And that'll decrease in coverage and intensity as we go through Friday night. And that's your severe weather update. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at your weekend forecast. So as we head on into the weekend, you can quickly see where the trouble spot is from Minnesota up here into Nebraska. Look at this. You've got that's where our area of severe weather is. We've got a little trough working in. It's going to enhance the instability and also enhance the uh, wind energy in the mid levels to uh, create an organized area of showers and thunderstorms potentially in those areas bringing wind and hail threat up there there's our stationary boundary we've been watching that's been sitting in place all week serving as a focus for showers and thunderstorms north of that boundary it's been a little bit cooler particularly in the great lakes in the northeast anywhere in this green you can see pop-up showers and thunderstorms the north East is going to see a little bit more in the way of organized activity. So maybe more of your Saturday is uh, rainy and cloudy. Same in the Pacific Northwest. Where we've got a system working in, could bring some showers there. Looking at how the radar plays out through the weekend, this is the future radar. So we get on into Saturday afternoon, you can see that shower and thunderstorm activity kind of moving in through the Northeast. We're not seeing a lot in the way of organized activity back here in the trouble spot that we're looking at. I think the model is underdoing this. So pay attention, even though I'm not sure showing any precipitation here right now in areas from Wisconsin back into Nebraska for a little bit more in the way of supercell activity or organized um, line segments as we go on through Saturday afternoon into the evening hours and uh, everywhere else just pop up showers and thunderstorms and that will persist into the early evening hours. May see a couple of little MCS has moved through uh, providing focus for shower and thunderstorm activity overnight 
but uh, not really all that much in the way of big, organized, wash out your weekend plans weather, folks, especially as we get on into Sunday afternoon, could see a little bit more of an enhancement up here in the Great Lakes. A few more showers uh, off the front range of the Rockies as well. Thunderstorms are popping up all over the place in the southeast through the afternoon. So not a wash out, but if you've got outdoor plans, keep an eye to the sky. Keep those weather radios handy. Make sure you have ways to receive alerts in case a severe thunderstorm warning or tornado warning is issued for your area. Looking at temperatures, very, very, very warm across much of the nation. 90s in place across 80% of the country at least with hundreds in the desert southwest, San Joaquin Valley seeing hundreds as well. Cool spots north uh, west, Great Lakes and Northeast, everybody else solidly in the 90s on Saturday as we head into Sunday. Much the same situation, mid to upper 90s across much of the south till we get to the desert southwest where it jumps back up into the hundreds into the San Joaquin Valley too. Again, a little bit cooler in the northwest. We're seeing 70s, 80s along the border uh, and then back into the northeast. It's going to be cool as well up there with temperatures in the 60s. If you're heading out to the beach, then stay tuned. The beach forecast is coming right up. So if you're heading on out to the beaches to find relief from the heat this weekend, you may find a few pop-up showers or thunderstorms that you have to navigate around, but it doesn't look like a washout. Like I said, this map is showing something I haven't really shown before. It is the probability of precipitation over a 12-hour period, and the 12-hour period that I'm showing you is 8 a.m. Saturday to 8 p.m. East Coast Saturday. And for example, up here in Cape Cod, there's a 56% chance of rain between those uh, time frames. And so as you get on down here toward the mid-Atlantic and into the upper southeast, we're not seeing very much in the way of probabilities for precipitation. So it's going to be a mostly sunny day at the beach and hot as well. Down here in Florida, those probabilities pick up in earnest until you get down to the southern tip of the state and then back into the Gulf of Mexico as well, and virtually nothing out in the west. So that's what we're looking at for Saturday. What about Sunday? Well, let's take a look. Sunday, much, much better up in the northeast, although the water temperatures are much cooler. Nice until you get all the way down into Florida, and then you see those probabilities pick back up along the Gulf Coast again, 83 uh, here in the big bend of Florida places like that. So that's what we're looking at in terms of probabilities of rainfall. Taking a look at some specific locations, if you want to go on out and take a look at say uh, Virginia Beach, you know, you can do that or you can come on down here and look at some of the North Carolina beaches if you're traveling out to the Outer Banks. Actually, let's let's go back and take a look at um, Virginia Beach again and see what we've got there. So looking down here at Virginia Beach, we can click on that umbrella. Look, Pretty good, Saturday and Sunday, highs near 90. If you wanna take a look at the water temperature, there that is 79.9, uh, so 80 degrees out here in Virginia Beach, not bad. What about if we go on down to take a look at Myrtle Beach, what does that look like? Actually, let me go back again, I hit the wrong button. Here we go, Myrtle Beach, there it is, down here, Myrtle Beach, we can see the temperature in the forecast here, 30% chance on Saturday, 30% chance on Sunday, so not bad. High in the upper 80s and 81 for the water temperature out there, looks very, very nice. And then one more stop way down here in Southern Florida, if we wanna take a look at, say, Fort Lauderdale, look at that. 40% chance on Saturday and 50% chance on Sunday of pop-up showers and thunderstorms, highs in the mid 80s with water temperatures running in the mid 80s. So not too bad out there, folks. And that is your beach forecast. Have fun if you're heading out to the beach. At the beginning of the show, I indicated a pattern change is coming, and it is. And if you've been watching for the past couple of days, I've been talking about this, folks, and you can see it already in place by early next week. This is Monday morning. Next week, we've got a big ridge coming up out west, trough working into the Midwest, and our remnants of our ridge from this week still hanging on in the east and but watch what happens as we going out toward midweek big amplification of this ridge out west and this trough gets a little bit deeper particularly over the great lakes area those blue colors start to show up troughing in the east a little bit of ridging hanging on in the northeast but that abates over time as we get on into wednesday and thursday but then as we get on into the weekend uh, that ridge starts to flatten out in the west the trough starts to flatten out in the east and we get a little bit of a zonal flow coming in this way and from 
the west to the east, and that'll allow temperatures to moderate back across the south again. Our 850s, which gives us a good proxy of temperatures at the surface in terms of above or below normal, reds and blues, you can kind of see how that plays out too as we get from Monday into Tuesday. Strongest signal out here in parts of uh, the south central, western central portion of the country, filtering into the central portion of the country, back into the nation's midsection, up into the northeast over time, and eventually into the east as we head on in toward Thursday and then in fri you know, Friday that hangs on in the northeast continues to hang on in the southwest, but then we get that zonal flow. Anticyclone comes in here again to the southeast, starts to build a ridge in, and we warm back up as we get into next week. But we will get a little bit of relief. The four-day precipitation total ending next Friday, so this gives you a good idea of what precipitation is likely to fall through the week basically a signal for above here in the southeast, maybe along the southern tier and uh, certainly along the east coast too, but then drier out west. And if we look at the six to 10 day outlook covering the period July the 1st through the 5th from the Weather Prediction Center, much above in the Pacific Northwest, still hanging on to above along the east coast, below in the southwest, into the nation's midsection that may get pushed a little bit to the south and east as we go out in time above in Alaska and Hawaii precipitation again that signal for much above in the southwest along the southern tier near normal in the Great Lakes near normal along the west coast above in Alaska and Hawaii and so hopefully we'll get a break from this big heat at least for a few days next week so we're looking for that we'll pay attention to what happens after that later on. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and solar storms can certainly affect us to where we are, folks, in many different ways. And that's why I include this in the daily weather video so that you don't have to go somewhere else to find it. You can find it all together, right, with your weather forecast. It all fits nicely. It's of interest to me, and I like to share it with you. Space weather forecasting is still rather in its infancy, and we were expecting a big coronal hole stream and increased solar winds to hit, potentially increasing geomagnetic storm conditions up to level two. We haven't really seen that. It's been a little bit delayed, and so we're going to see that uh, occur, but maybe it's a little bit less than we thought initially. But in any event, we've got a coronal hole, another one turning toward us. We've got several filaments and sunspots moving in our direction as well. Any of those could snap off a CME and send it our way. So we'll be on the lookout for that. Nothing going on on the coronagraph. Looking at Aurora, so we still have a risk of Aurora, fairly high, and so may see that. The view line is down here in and across the northern tier. If you're in North Dakota, Minnesota, you may get a look at it. Northern, northern Maine, northern, northern Washington State as well, folks. That's what we're looking at there. Sunspots, bunch of regions turning away. None of those are really all that complex. This one here, 2122 is new and it's coming in and it looks like it's got some close magnetic proximity with positive and negative polarity. So we'll watch that as it comes on in and keep you up to date there. Nothing going on on the volcano front. Nothing since the big 5.7 in the DR the other day on the earthquake front. So just a few minor shakes, nothing too much going on. Look, that looks like that's around a great Sitkin out here. I'm not sure if that uh, Alaskan volcano is related to that or not, but uh, that is your space weather update. That brings us into the answer to today's weather IQ question, which was about the mountain range that runs up and down the mid-Atlantic. That's active geologically too. So we see a lot of volcanism under sea and that increases the sea temperature too. But the, what is the name of the underwater mountain chain that runs through the Atlantic Ocean? Is it the Mid-Atlantic Range, Great Ocean Divide, Atlantic Fault Line, or the Abyss, Abyssal Spine? The answer is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And it contains some very, very tall mountains, folks, and it uh, is out there. And so it's part of a plate boundary. And now you know about the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And that's it for the day. Just the only other thing to know about is that uh, 1977, on June the 26th, Elvis Presley gave his final concert. He would, uh, it was in Indianapolis, Indiana, and he would go on to uh, pass away two weeks later, or actually it was less than two months later. That's when it was. So had that wrong. Sorry about that. Uh, he died on August the 16th, 1977. But that is it for the day, folks. Now you know the weather. And of course, as always, this is Cold Rain reminding you other stations run 24 7. We got you covered right here, right now, 48 14 at Cold Rain's Weather World. Take care, folks. Have a blessed day. Bye.